Hey guys, it's Adam from Loose Pixel, and welcome back. Now last week, I posted a video talking about social media and the type of impacts that it can have on your productivity, on your self-esteem, on your creative process, more often than not in a negative way. Not always, but very, very often, depending on the type of artist that you are. And it's pretty clear to me now, looking back a week later at the type of response that it got, the type of comments that it that you've posted on it, which by the way, quite a few, so thank you very much for that. I have actually read every one of your comments, whether I had the time to answer them all, I'm trying, but a lot of you that have commented on that video. But the overlying theme, if I was to simplify it and summarize it, that I heard from the majority of, of of you guys who posted was, thank you, I needed to hear that. I felt relief and reassurance in your responses, which is kind of curious in a positive way because what it tells me is this concern, this worry, this feeling of isolation, of inadequacy, or whatever other negative feeling you were feeling, um, is something that we you feel quite frequently and it mattered to you to hear somebody say that out loud. And it's amazing how many of us feel this way. It's amazing how many of us are impacted by this, yet we don't talk about it. And one begs to ask the question, why? Why do we keep these feelings to ourselves? Why do we let these feelings eat away at us when there are so many very vocal artists out there, very respectable artists out there that express this feeling as well to share a sense of, of oneness and camaraderie with our fellow artists? And that's the reason why I shared it as well. I've heard artists like Ahmed al talk about it. I've heard Noah Bradley talk about it. I've heard Tyler Edlin talk about it. I've heard Bobby Chu talk about it. I've heard Chris Oatley, Clint Kearley. I've heard all of these artists talk about it. And these are very respected artists out there in the industry that have, you know, they're, they're, they're artists that have achieved quite a bit. And you have to ask yourself, despite all of that, why do we continue to feel this way? Why do we need artists that we listen to, that we look up to, like the ones I look up to? Why do we need to hear them say that? Because underneath all of this, the underlying issue here is our fear of being ourself. Our fear of being open, candid, authentic with people. I'd say that would be kind of the second secondary comment that I got that kind of tied into the first. And that was, thank you for being so human, so authentic, so, uh, so honest. My honesty was appreciated. Why? <laughs> why is this why is this such a big deal? I mean, it's a big deal to me too. When I hear somebody like like Ahmed Alduri talk about how the fact that he's had a crappy day, I, I, I really appreciate hearing that from him because I look at his artwork and I go, wow, you know, if we could all aspire to be that good. And hearing him say he's had a crappy day reassures me. We, as artists, are hard on ourselves. We, we, we are on our own very often. We don't necessarily have somebody sitting next to us saying, oh yeah, that's all part of the process. <laughs> it's almost like going through puberty on your own without anybody telling you, yeah, yeah, facial hair is a normal thing when you're a guy, right? And sometimes when you're a girl too. There's a certain sense of shame and a certain sense of you know, embarrassment that we have days, weeks, sometimes months where we just feel like garbage, where we feel we have no chance at succeeding in this big competitive industry out there. I have never spoken to an artist. I have spoken to very, very few artists, save a few exceptions, who, when given the chance and the platform, weren't completely open and honest about the fact that, hey, you know, this, this, to, this, live demo painting I'm doing might turn out to be complete crap. It might turn out great. It might not. And let's hope for the best, right? 
It can be very stressful because you know that there's certain days where you're just not in the zone. Well, that's, that's the issue I want to talk about today. And that's what I want to, I want to go beyond what I started last week talking about the whole social media thing. And I want to evolve into the next incredibly important topic. And it has, it's really at the, at the foundation of the type of artists we decide to be, the professional directions we decide to go with our artwork and the authenticity of our expression. No matter how hard you try, no matter what efforts you make, and take this from somebody who's been on this planet now for over four decades, no matter how hard you try, no matter how convincingly you try to mimic to impression those who you look up to, you will never ever be able to not be yourself. Who you were when you were five years old is in great part, give or take, who you're going to be when you're 75 years old. As a father, I look at my kids and I look at the type of personalities, the type of temperaments, the type of talents the type of struggles that they've had at a very, very young age, you can start to already get a very solid impression on who they're going to be when they get older. Now, of course, people grow, they evolve, they mature, they develop all of their different skills and stuff like that. But the undercurrent of who they are as people continues on. Certain major issues might be overcome. You know, so people have certain phobias or certain likes and dislikes. Those types of things can evolve. But the, the fundamental, the foundation of who you are really doesn't move much. I look at my son now, who's five years old, Lucas. I look at the things he's incredibly passionate about. I look at the things that annoy him. And I can see where he's going with that. I look at my daughter, who's 17, who's now in college studying illustration the funny, silly, lighthearted, yet remarkably strong and incredibly wise and incredibly talented and incredibly uh, fascinating person that she is, is exactly how people described her when she was five years old too. It's at the foundation of who she is. And when I look at myself and who I am today and the type of things that I like and dislike, you know, what makes up who I am fundamentally, I haven't changed a whole lot. I've grown, I've overcome, but I haven't changed a whole lot. And there was a point in my life where I had to realize that that was, that was the reality of who I was. The voice I have, the body I have, the hair I have or don't. <laughs> The what makes up who I am is not going anywhere. And the more I realize that, the older I get, the more I embrace that facet of who I am, the more I realize really amazing things about myself as an artist and about myself as a person, about myself as a father. I realize that as I sit here record, as I sit here record, <laughs> as I sit here recording this video for you, my, the sound of my voice is completely unremarkable to me as an individual. When I listen to the sound of my own voice, this has been my reality my whole life. The sound of my voice has been the neutral vocal tone to me my whole life. There's nothing great or horrible about it. It's just, it's just me. It's my point of reference for everything else in the world. My height, my size, my strength or lack thereof, my likes and dislikes, all of these things I consider my neutral zone because it's me, because I have been myself and I've lived inside this body and mind for the last 43 plus years. 
And I enjoy once in a while, if I'm a passenger in a car, if I'm not the one doing the driving, or if I'm stopped at a stop sign, or if I'm walking down the street, or if I'm, if I'm at the mall picking up paper towels or whatever the case might be, I like every now and then taking a moment and looking at somebody, a complete, utter stranger, anybody, a 65-year-old woman who's you know, looking for room deodorizers or some guy who's crossing the street on his way to college or some kid holding the hand, holding their parents' hand, walking across the street downtown. And I think to myself for a moment, that person has been that person and has to be that person and everything that makes up who they are. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I have to step outside of myself to realize that that person is that person always and will never have a choice. I think about their voice. I think about their family. Hypothetically speaking, of course, I use my imagination. I think about their favorite foods. I think about their favorite taste in, in lovers and cars and TV shows. I think about what is it that makes that person who they are? How do they tick? Because that's the reality of their life. And as human beings, it's very difficult for us to step outside of our own neutral zone and observe the world around us, observe the people around us and realize that they are as neutral to them as you are to you. To them, there is nothing remarkable or unremarkable about them. They're just, they're just a point of reference for the rest of the world. As such, one of the things that I had to realize when it came to my own experiences and my own life and my own path artistically, and as a YouTuber, as somebody who shares his thoughts and feelings with people around the world, that as unremarkable as my life and the sound of my own voice and the size of my biceps and the texture of my shirt might be to me. To you, it's unique. To you, it's different. To you, it's an actual experience. What I create artistically to me is always an effort to keep up with my imagination because my imagination is the only thing bigger than me. Because I am always only a product of what I'm capable of doing physically. But my imagination is always 10 steps ahead of me, as yours is with you. So it's almost impossible to not walk away with some feeling of inadequacy every single time you pick up your paintbrush to paint something. Every single time you open up your mind or you try to capture your thoughts and dreams and feelings on a page on a canvas, through a camera. And as such, as human beings, it's our natural tendency to take most of what we do for granted and take most of what we see other people do as something special. And what I want you to start realizing today, in a healthy way, of course, <laughs> is that you might not be anything remarkable to you. In fact, you might be very subpar based on the standards that you wished you could have reached. But to what you consider an inad inadequacy or a flaw or a weakness to others, depending on how you treat what it is that you have is actually something quite unique and something quite fascinating because you hold one quality over the rest of the world. You possess something that nobody else in the world will ever, ever have. And that is you. You are absolutely authentic in and of yourself, despite how plain you might think you are. And as an artist, one of the things we need to learn to embrace is how 
what we consider completely mundane and neutral is an authentic form of self-expression that other people out there really need to hear. The respect, the love, the, the appreciation that I got on last week's video is humbling. But I wasn't trying to be remarkable last week. I was just trying to be as, as authentic with you as I possibly could, as I am with you today. I'm trying to be as, I'm trying not to put on a show for you. I'm trying not to be something remarkable to you today. I'm trying to be completely, utterly raw with you today. Because I've, I've learned over the years how incredibly valuable that is. This is something else also that my children have taught me. And I'm sure anybody who's, you know, babysat a child or loved a child or has raised a, a, their, their, a pet, a cat or a dog or, you know, a ferret or a Bengal tiger, if you're that lucky. If anybody, if you've ever loved another young creature before, one of the things you learn very quickly is babies and young children and kittens and puppies are so completely and authentically pure. They're so, they're so authentic. <laughs> they're so real. And they are not trying to be anything. They're not. In fact, very often as a parent, as an adult, one of the things we, we have to control in ourselves is the impulse to stop them from being themselves, micromanage them, force them to change, force them to live up to a certain standard that you might not even fully understand yourself. You have to question life. You have to question your beliefs and say, am I doing my child justice by bugging them all the time about this or that? When is it time for me to step in and help them? And when is it time for me to just shut up and listen and watch and learn? We have to do this with ourselves too. We have to be able to sit back and look at ourselves and say, this is who I am. And when you do that, you start to open up your mind to not only yourself as a human, as a person, but you start to open up your mind to respecting and loving and admiring and eventually, hopefully exploiting your normal, your normalcy exploiting your neutralness because you realize that it's in that neutrality. It's in that unremarkableness as you so, as you so believe that you have a, an absolutely lucid understanding of the things that matter to you and the things that don't. And you start to value your opinions and thoughts. And when you share those with other people, you'll be incredibly surprised at how many people really, really needed to hear that. How many people appreciate you and love you and, and commend you for your bravery and your openness and your authenticity. Exactly what you guys did for me last week in abundance. I might add, thank you. You are validating you are reassuring me that I'm on the right path and it's my obligation to turn the mirror on you today to let you know that what it is you are commending me for is exactly what you should be commending yourself for as well as an artist you need to be incredibly honest with yourself. I might have said, mentioned this in earlier art talks in the past, but one of my favorite moments uh, in film, in my film in experiences that I've had watching films growing up is that scene in the matrix where Neo's in the Oracle's kitchen and he looks over at the threshold of her door and she's got that wood carved sign written in Latin. And when he looks up at it, the Oracle looks at him and said, and she says, it means know thyself. 
everything that I'm talking about today can be summarized in that moment, in that understanding. Know yourself. Embrace yourself. Understand that as unremarkable as you think you are to everybody else, you're fascinating. You're fascinating even if you're 450 pounds and you're only two feet tall. You're fascinating if you're 11 feet tall and you weigh 16 pounds. You're remarkable if you think the sound of your voice is sibilant and irritating and nasal. You're fascinating if you've got a muted, you know, mumbly, dumbass sounding voice. The only time you are offensive, confided, you are being a kind person, you aren't being hurtful to other people, but the only time people will react negatively to you, or at least good people will react neg neg negatively, negatively, I'll get it, just give me a chance here. <laughs> the only time people will react negatively to you is when they can sense that you aren't being authentic. When they can sense that you're, you've got that mask on your face and you're trying to be something you're not. If you think about celebrities, if you think about people who have been loved and respected over the years, one of the things that makes them so admired and loved is the fact that they completely and truly embrace who they are. Jack Black, Bette Midler, Jim Carrey, you know, think about these people that that are so admired and loved for their, the depth of their personality. Take all of their talents aside. Take Jim Carrey's sense of humor aside and you find an incredibly richly authentic human being. People think he's nuts and think he's a complete, you know, a complete kook for the weird behavior he's got lately. No. He has learned the art. He is, he is pushing his ability to be real as far as he possibly can. He is ignoring the fact that he's got a camera in front of his face and he's allowing him ex himself to express himself to the fullest of his potential. So when he decides to act like a complete weirdo and grow that long psycho, you know, serial killer beard and he starts talking this weird shit, on the TV show or he just stares at people for 10 minutes and makes them feel all cringy and weird. He is authentically letting his ego fly out the window and he's just looking at you right in the face, one person to another. It's like that, that woman, I can't remember what her name is, but that woman who did that exhibit, she was an artist who, a performance artist who, who did nothing but sit down and stare. She would sit down in the middle of a room at a table or just sitting in a chair and one at a time people would just sit down in front of her and they would look at each other into each other for as long as they so chose the whole point of that performance was to experience humanity as purely as possible and it was a very moving thing i mean there's a lot of contemporary artists out there that are about as phony as a three dollar bill right and they have all kinds of stupid exhibits. I've been to contemporary art museums and 99% of the time I'm usually quite a, offended and irritated by how pretentious it is. But every now and then somebody pops out of the woodworks and shows a true authentic side of themselves. And, and this particular performance I thought was quite powerful and quite meaningful. I remember even one of my students from Germany. It was quite an interesting experience. Every now and then he would, he was, he was a liver. He was somebody who loved to, <laughs> I don't mean that literally. He wasn't a liver. <laughs> like, you know, he wasn't a, he wasn't the organ liver, but he was a person who loved to live and he loved to experience and he had an amazingly warm personality, an amazingly intoxicating personality. And I remember one day he took me on a trip through his city in Berlin. He was taking the subway trip. I don't know how he could afford that on his data plan, but we did an entire two hour session on Skype as he took the subway through Germany. And I got a kind of bit of a scenic view of his, of his city as we, uh, as we did our class. And then at the very end of our class, it was perfectly timed. Um, he let me go because 
they had this thing in the town square of of the city i can't remember which city in germany i don't know if it was berlin i'm not sure but he uh they had this little thing where they would where around noon a bunch of strangers would congregate in downtown in some part downtown and they would stand in front of a stranger who they've never met and they would stare at each other they would look at each other for about 10 minutes each and just experience each other through each other's eyes for 10 minutes i thought what a freaking remarkable thing to do i don't know if they ever did something like that in montreal i'd love to try it out i'd love to see what that felt like it was a powerful moment it was a powerful experience for these people to stare at another human being because it was raw humanity and that's what you experience when you look at a child you experience raw humanity when i turn to my son and i tell him he's brilliant or any child for that matter and you tell them they're beautiful or they're brilliant or they're really really smart or they're super strong i love the answer that young kids give you it's something that adults are very often incapable of doing and that's they just unapologetically absolutely agree with you it's not a remarkable thing for them to completely agree with you that they are really really smart or really really talented it's this the most authentic yep that you'll ever get from another human being it's just yeah yeah i am i i am very very smart and they say it and it's absolutely adorable and it's endearing and it's right it's true they are they are absolutely fascinating and they are absolutely brilliant and they know it and you know it and there's no there's no humility <laughs> there's no ego it's just yeah they understand that as human beings as people they are incredibly loved and incredibly authentic and incredibly fascinating and brilliant and powerful creatures they get that and we somehow through school that usually around a certain age i usually see around kids around seven to nine years old they start to get embarrassed. They start to get shy. They start to get humble. You know, if you ask a classroom full of five-year-olds and you say, how many of you are the smartest kids in this class? I guarantee you every single hand will shoot up to the sky. But if you ask that same question to nine or 10-year-olds, two or three might at most. You know, if they say who's the smartest kid in the class, they'll usually point to the smartest kid in the class at that age. I remember even seeing a TED talk where there was a, a teacher who a child psychologist or something like that who actually mentioned that very thing as well and i've noticed that myself you are too and i'm not just saying this as a pep talk i'm not just saying this as you know as some shallow encouragement you know you're the best you're special no you really are <laughs> you're pretty freaking amazing through my eyes and through the eyes of everybody around you you really are an incredibly fascinating, brilliant, remarkable person, as is your artwork. And as artists, we need to bridge that gap between the two, between our authentic selves and our expressions. And I'll give you a little tip on how to do that. Don't second guess yourself. Don't second guess yourself for two seconds. Just, just do it. Just follow whatever it is that your guts tell you to do follow your instincts follow your gut because in my personal opinion your gut is a far better judge of character and a far better guide than your brain your brain it's influenced by so many different factors but your gut your gut always knows deep down inside you know what you like or don't you know when you're bullshitting people and saying that, oh, I like this, I like that, but deep down inside, you know what you really like. You know who you really are, right? And you're smiling because you know, you know I know what I'm talking about. People are going to love you for that. Do people love Hellboy because he's the toughest thing on earth? No, people love Hellboy because he's completely obsessed with kittens. 
He's got this weakness for kittens and chocolate bars and Snickers bars, right? That's what makes him lovable. That's what makes him, that's what makes you care for him. That's what makes him matter to you is because despite his muscular, you know, demonic exterior, he, he's a complete softy inside. So are you. Now, of course, if your authentic self wishes harm on other people or yourself, then that's not a side of yourself you want to exploit physically. Artistically, there's no rules. It's a form of artistic expression. And through purging yourself of these feelings, you will start to discover things about yourself because it's remarkable how the human brain works. It's remarkable how your brain can connect something horrible to something beautiful and something beautiful to something horrible. And it's amazing somehow how you can represent things in a very objectively grotesque way, but the undercurrent of it is actually something quite pure and beautiful and loving and caring. A lot of I've, you know, a lot of people have looked at my own art, at my art, and uh, seen that I very often like to paint dark things, like this painting of this pyromancer, for instance. You know, it's kind of a bit of a darker theme, or the fact that I'm absolutely in love with the Souls series and Miyazaki's work, or Yermo de Toro's work, or Bikshinsky's work. They're very dark themed artists, but when I look at them, I don't feel darkness, I feel beauty. I feel texture and richness and wisdom and depth and texture and life and authenticity. There's a pureness of expression that I, it knocks the wind out of my lungs. It's just captivating. Trust your gut as an artist, listen to yourself and realize that no matter how unremarkable you think you are, it's only because you are forced to be yourself 24 hours a day, seven days a week, for decades upon decades upon decades. To you, you might be somebody, something completely uninteresting. But the more you realize and the more you embrace who you are in its purest, purest form, when you can quiet the voices around you of people that are telling you that you should be living your life this way or that way within healthy boundaries, of course, like I said, right? But as long as you are living a healthy, non-destructive life, as long as you are being as authentic to yourself as possible, you're going to start to discover how amazing you are. And as an artist, you want to bridge that connection between that authentic self and how you express yourself on your canvas, on your page. Okay? I want you to start to open your mind to this facet of yourself because this is going to be your biggest challenge as an artist moving forward for the rest of your life until you die. This is the biggest challenge we have, getting to truly and honestly know yourself and be yourself in its purest form. All right? So, once again, I said thank you last week for all of your support. <laughs> and I think it was a little bit ironic that I was sharing a little bit of an anti-social media statement last week when, well, on social media, you just so happened to show me a ton of appreciation. So thank you for that. It, it, it's your, your warmth has not been overlooked. It's been truly appreciated. And I'm very happy that you are helping me embrace my, my more authentic self, my, as, as authentic as I can be with you. All right. So with that said, happy painting. I love you all. And I'll see you next week. Take care.